Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, or medical well-being. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Evening, and what a heavenly show do I have for you tonight. I have an exciting, exciting two guests tonight, and we are really going to be talking about what's going on in the heavens, literally. My first guest is going to be Nancy Ogren, and for those of you who have been following Journeys with Rebecca, she is my resident, so to speak, astrologer. She's going to give us an update as to what's going on in the planets and the stars that may affect you and your loved ones and certainly all areas of your life. So we're going to be speaking with her right after the next break. And then I also have a new uh, guest on tonight by the name of Dr. Mark Olson. Now, Dr. Mark Olson is involved with the Sonora sightings. We're going to be talking about all the UFO and extraterrestrial activity that's been going on in Sonora, California. So, as stated, we are going to be having a great heavenly show tonight. And for those of you who have not been tuned in uh, recently, I would like to direct your attention to my website, that is journeyswithrebecca.com. You will see that it has been totally updated. It has a new facelift, so to speak. I believe that it is much more functional uh, ease of operation for those of you who are trying to navigate the site. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to the left side of the um, website because there we're going to be adding some different things in so to make the resources a little bit more convenient for those who are really trying to look for a solid or a singular um, a piece of information or a bit of help or assistance. We're going to be breaking it down into a, a spiritual aspect as well as one with UFOs. There's going to be some new pictures. Um, we're hoping to get some uh, film clips and stuff as well, so that's going to be updated and coming forward. We're also going to be doing one on alternative health, and that's strictly related to those guests that I have on that may would like to update or just to give us some new information about what's new and shaking in their world. And so all of this is going to be added on to the front page of the website. Of course, Journey's News is still there. There you're going to find the latest information. Um, also, with some of the guests that we've had on and we will be having on, there will be some information for those that may be following uh, some of those special guests on any new appearances or anything new that's coming up around them. Also, under Journey's, um, Journey's News, we're also going to be continuing with a little bit of our EVP sessions. Um, and so there will always be a link there. If you have your own EVP or any experiences, please don't hesitate to email me. That's mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. Because remember, this is a show about us sharing information. And for those of you who have had any experiences, share them. We'll be happy to post them. I'd be happy to read them. Uh, would also be happy to read any of your questions. Uh, you can see where I have also added a link there under Journeys News. Uh, it's an email question. And if you are not listening to the show, we'll be posting some of those right there on the front page. So that's some exciting changes coming up. Our world news is still going to be there. 
Um, there has been some significant discoveries. I have some guests coming forward that we will be p posting some of those under Our World News. Uh, you're going to find it most fascinating. kind of ties in with today's um, things about what's really going on in the heavens and the galaxies. Um, and this will be by a person that actually works for NASA who launches um, the satellites that bring back this information to us here on the Earth plane. Real neat take on that. So you'll want to look forward to that show, too, with Dr. Uh, Dowdy Jr. He'll be coming on. Um, also, Mick and Sylvie Avery uh, will also be bringing on a, a lady by the name of Miss Zola, and she's going to be talking about present memory. Just so, so many things happening here at the home of Journeys with Rebecca. We are so appreciative, by the way, for each and every one of you that share in this journey. Um, we're also expanding. We're going to different markets. We're going to be in different places. Um, you will look for all of that under Our Journeys News. And please don't forget, I do free email readings. If you have a question and something that's important in your life that you would like to have answered, they are free of charge to you. It is a service that I provide for those who are listening and dedicated listeners to Journeys with Rebecca. And don't forget, for those of you who have more in-depth issues that you wish to have help solve, um, I also do private readings by appointment. Please don't forget that. You can mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com with that information or questions that you might have, or you can also contact me directly, and that's Rebecca at journeyswithrebecca.com. Thank you so much, and look forward to all these changes that's coming up. You know, life is nothing but change, so I'm happy to be able to keep with the flow of things. And again, just to reintroduce my guest tonight, we're going to be visiting with Nancy Ogren, who is going to be giving us an astrological update, and we're going to be visiting with Dr. Mark Olson from the Sonora Sightings in California. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have questions about your love life or your job? Get your private psychic reading from Rebecca. Call to schedule an appointment at 1-888-958-2768. That number again is 1-888-958-2768. You're listening to JWR Radio. More than talk, it's entertaining insight and discoveries. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. And as I promised earlier in the show, we have with us today Nancy Elgar, who is going to let us know what's happening in the heavens. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm great, Rebecca. Good, good. Well, as always, it's such a delight, and it has been too long since the last time you were on, and we talked an awful lot off air before we decided to do the show today. And one of the promises I'm going to make to you is that we need to get you on more regularly so that you can give us updates. But we do have some new and exciting news that we're going to be sharing with people at the end of the segment about something that you and I are kind of working on together, and I think we're going to have fun with it. But in the meantime, I know you have got just a ton, a ton of information because the heavens, as it were, is very busy these days. <laughs> they are busy. Lots of activity. Well, and, and we know that uh, we had a Capricorn full moon um, there the, the 21st of June with the solstice, and then we had a Cancer new moon, and now we're going to have another Capricorn full moon. We're having two Capricorn full moons this summer. So that's something that kind of keeps us on our toes, too, because it really is about reflection of uh, what what are you, what do you need to decide and discern about where you're headed and what you want to be doing and how you want to be doing it and do you have a plan cuz Capricorn gets a bad rap as i've said before he's the eeyore of the uh, zodiac and gets kind of a bad rap but but really says are you on target are you where you want to be are you doing what you want to do and if you and if you're not on target why not so you're going to feel yourself evaluating a lot of different parts of your life in these next months, and that's because of the double uh, Capricorn full moons this summer. So that's one big thing. Well, let's let's. I want to talk a little bit because we're going to have them. What are they? Two months apart or one month apart? One month apart. So June twenty first and July twenty. So actually, we have two full months of that same type of energy. And exactly. So, uh, okay. Okay. So exactly. that's really going to put people into you know, kind of like what I'm seeing is like a, a an introspection mode, if you will. You bet. Okay. That's exactly what it is because both Capricorn and Cancer are Yin energies, and so we've got the Sun and Moon uh, and the longer nights. And we're really in this real introspection time, probably more so than we've been in for, you know, a lot of cycles. Okay, so everyone out there listening, just understand that this is a natural process. It's all about what the uh, energies are bringing forth onto the earth plane for you. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. And then, of course, the other big excitement is that Mars is closer to the earth than it has been for a, a very long time. And 
it, it happens in mid-August, and I, and as you alluded to, I will probably post something about that uh, on your site, or post something and send it to your site because uh, it's very interesting. Mars being closer to the Earth than it's been for a long time, and Mars in the U.S. chart is causing a lot of us to question: Are we headed where we want to go? Because Mars really is the mover shaker. And if each of us individually can decide in our own lives and it, it, obviously personally, nationally, globally, are we headed where we, where we think we want to go to achieve what we want to achieve? And we each have to ask that of ourselves, of our nation, and of the globe, really. Let's, I, I want you, if you would, expound on the energy of Mars. I mean, you, you know, because I, I want people out there that if they're not familiar with astrology, or even if they are, then they can get kind of a refresher. Sure. Course. But those that don't understand the energies of Mars, what does that mean, Mars being closest to the Earth? What does that mean? It, 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 it'll cause us actually to feel a little bit agitated. We will feel like things aren't moving fast enough because Mars is a fast-moving planet. And being close to us, it, it's creating a sense of, what what do I need? What do I need to attend to? What aren't I doing? There's going to be a lot of questioning of ourself. What's what's the matter with me? Am I off sync? And it's not really it's not really as negative as it is. You're not used to that that much energy, and and it's it's just a, a higher vibration of energy. Okay, so let's talk about the closeness. You know, you talked about that event happening in 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 uh, August. Yeah. And we will be ta- we will be doing that crossover here, where you're going to be in our under my journey's news with some highlights of of special activities. This definitely being one of them. Exactly. But, you, you know, with it, how long is it going to? I'm it, not it's sure I'm through not mid August. It, it's through mid August, and I will be more specific. Um, but with with a posting, but it is through mid August, it, and it's moving closer now, and actually gets the closest, which of course is still millions and millions of miles away. But coming in, you know, some planets have other planets cross into their orbit, and it's all, it's not quite that it's in our orbit, but it is closer to us as we both are passing orbitally. Um, it's very close to us. And so, like I said, Mars is very much the action planet. When you, when, when Mars is highlighted anywhere in your chart, uh, wherever that is, that's where the action in your life will be taking place. And so that's the other thing about this. Wherever Mars is for all of us, we, we better hold on to our hat because we're going to feel really like we've got to move forward, whatever forward is. I've got to interview for that new job. I've got to address this situation. You're not going to be as passive as maybe you normally are. You're going to find yourself saying the things that you've hesitated to say even. And that may be a good thing. Maybe it's about time they got set. All right. So it, let me put this into perspective. So we can use this energy of Mars to really shake up our own world, even those who are intimidated to do such a thing. Yes. This planet being in it, its closeness to the Earth um, is going to cause even those who would be the most intimidated to probably take a look at their world and maybe speak up and say, you know, I don't like color blue. You know, somebody. Yeah, gets, oh, exactly. Yeah, okay. It doesn't mean World War Three. What it means is, that yes, exactly. I'm sorry, that doesn't work for me. Um, excuse me. I'd like to. I'd really like to discuss a different way of doing this job so that it could work for both of us. That kind of thing. It doesn't have to. It's. It's not about war. Mars isn't always about war, but war. But Mars is always about change. Well, let, let's talk about war for just a second. War doesn't necessarily mean people are in battle. No. It doesn't necessarily mean that war, in and of itself, is a strategic planning. Exactly. And it's about getting from one point to the other or getting to the end result. So, you know, it's got a negative connotation to it, but it doesn't have to be that way. That's right. It means you're going to take an action, exactly. You know, an action is going to be taken, but sometimes we get intimidated that our action isn't what others may want to have happen. And that's where it doesn't have to be against anything. It has to be pro-beneficial to you. All right. So, you know, we... I really like the idea that, that Mars is going to be here for the people utilize the energy, folks. That's the point. The point is exactly. if, if you've got a tool and you need to get something done, pick it up, become aware, and use the tool. That's, yes. Uh, that's why I think astrology is such a, a, a great influence for us because if we can understand the energies and, and their subtleness, unfortunately a lot of us people are um, it, it, here around the world, 
we're kind of desensitized. And uh-huh. it's like about getting back into the subtle energies and letting those energies flow into your life so that you can utilize them. It's about stopping and listening, sensing and feeling. And uh, astrology is just is, is is that for me. Um, it's just one of those. And I when I say subtle, I mean it can have some pretty strong uh, strong uh, influences, but yes. it's still subtle nonetheless. It's not somebody sitting in front of you telling you you know the light is red or the light is green. You're right. So That's absolutely right. And it it is saying take take your take the parts of your life that. You're not sure are you're doing what you want to do and decide what that would look like if you took an action toward a different outcome. It's positive. Yes, exactly. All right. Now, we've talked about the, the, the two full moons. We talked about the one uh, that happened in June, the one that will happen in July mm-hmm. um, on those full moons and yep. those being in Capricorn and what that what that will do. And you use that in conjunction with the Mars energy. I think we've got some, some pretty positive and, and powerful tools that people can pick up and use. I agree. I think that's why I think it's really important that, that you get, you get grounded, you get focused, and then you speak your truth. Well, let's, let's talk about the Mars because once it gets out of this space, it's not going to be back in this close again for, didn't you say thousands of years? Oh, thousands of years. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, obviously none of us are going to be here, at least not no. where we're at now. So, uh, I would, I would recommend everybody yeah. utilizing it while it's here. Cause That's right. Speak yeah. up. Yeah. Speak <laughs> up, speak out, and feel positive. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Well, is there anything else coming up in the short term within the next couple of months that maybe people need to be aware of? or that they could utilize in conjunction with the Mars energy as well as the new, uh, the full moons? Well, the, the other thing is that Saturn is leaving Cancer, the planet Saturn, not happy in Cancer. Actually, Capricorn rules uh, Saturn, and it finally leaves after, leaves after two years. It leaves uh, Cancer for Leo. So we may also feel some real um, power, a sense of power and resolution, because Leo, of course, is fire, and Saturn has kind of been floating around going, uh, being that male uh, authority figure energy in that feminine sign of cancer saying, is anybody going to listen to me? <laughs> <laughs> so Saturn's going to kind of pop out of there into Leo and say, connect, let's get organized, let's get going. So, well, gosh, so be prepared for that too, because well. two years, long time to be sitting around in the living room having a cup of coffee. <laughs> Well, you know what's cool about that, though, when you say that, that kind of goes right along with the rest of it. Exactly. I mean, it's like these energies, can they, they just seem to complement each other, things that are going on right now. It is true. It wow. is really about, are you ready? Are you ready? And, and you've got time to get ready. And that's the other thing about astrology is that you set the intention of, of what you are going to do. Just setting the intention in this energy is enough to start the process of, of of movement of of a sense of of there's there's a breakthrough here there's the log jam has moved on and that's all you have to do is really just say my intention is to address this I'm not going to let it fall away I'm committed and then follow through because and you, then follow through because they've got the the energy is there for people to be able to do that you they're bet. not going to be left floundering like a fish out of water no, no they're no not unintended no yeah <laughs> no they're not that's right absolutely excellent excellent well let's talk a little bit about you for just a minute first of all you've written um you you, you write those uh, moonwise books um which is a, a calendar of a sorts. calendar day book for yes, yes i do moonways and that i'm going to tell you um i have utilized that so much because i've kind of you know I, I really believe in the natural ebb and flow and the energies that flow around us that we need to be more aware of them your that particular uh, day book that you have written, I, I will flip through it and it helps me to focus on getting back into that subtleness when our day-to-day living kind of takes us over. So I, I highly recommend it for somebody to actually take sit down and look at that, maybe get that ordered from you. I also am a huge, huge believer that, you know, I do psychic readings, but I have told probably more than half of my clients, please go get yourself an astrological reading as well. Somebody that can help define and pinpoint some of these things. And I'm going to tell you is that they almost always will will flow in conjunction with what an astrologer has. These people have a better idea of time-wise when these activities or this action is going to take place. So I'm going to recommend them to get a hold of you, you know, contact you. Gosh, that's what this is all about is a sharing with each other. Nancy, exactly. And they can still get this year's Moonways for $5. There you go. Go ahead and give it's, your website before we run out of uh, time. www.nancymillerogren.com And you can always get the link on my website. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks, Nancy. You bet. Thanks for having me. Talk. 
with an extra dimension. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back in your listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with my guest, as promised, Dr. Mark Olson from Sonora, California. Welcome to the show, Dr. Olson. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Rebecca. It's nice to talk to you again. I know. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, first of all, you know, we the last time you and I met, um, you had given me such a stupendous story, and it's a true story. It's not a story that we've made up here about some extraordinary events that are taking place right here, right now in Sonora, California. And what I'd like for you to do, um, Dr. Olson, is to maybe explain to everybody what those monumental events are, maybe when they started. You know, kind of give us a, an update because we're going to start sharing some information with the audience here in a little bit about where they can go and view some of this fantastic footage that you have. Okay. Well, it started a little over a year ago. We started getting some um, very extraordinary sightings of aerial phenomena here in Sonora, California. So many that I went out and bought a uh, camcorder and started recording them. And ever since, I've been recording. So what's what what? All right. So what kind of the events? I love that aerial phenomena. That's <laughs> <laughs> I love that politically correct term. That's great. <laughs> so I like what, it too. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about some of the 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 actual sightings that you yourself as well. I know that there's other people that have also seen this, and mm-hmm. we're going to cover that a little bit more later on in the show. But tell us a little bit about the events. Tell us what they look like, what was so phenomenal about them. Well, we've had so many different kinds of sightings. Of uh, We've had uh, cylinders. We've had disc-shaped objects. We've had triangles. Uh, we've recorded, I think, five so far triangles, one in broad daylight. The cylinder was uh, taped in broad daylight. And uh, we've had glowing objects, color-changing objects. We've also had uh, objects that actually change shape as we're recording them. And, and they're just phenomenal. Uh, we've had so many different ones. We have bright objects that get brighter and brighter and brighter until they're they're huge. Well, let me ask you: Have you ever have you ever seen um, any of the film footage from the Phoenix Lights? Uh, yes, they have. What you're describing to me is very similar to what Dr. Kitai was talking to us about about the the changing of the objects. They they're they're, they're individual and they come together and make a bigger object or they change colors. It doesn't for them. It didn't look like it was the same aerial phenomena always being present. Uh, That's exactly the way it is here. We've had so many different ones, both day and night. We've actually had objects that we've caught, uh, white ball-like objects or sphere-like objects that we've caught actually um, chasing um, airplanes. Okay, so let me let me let me take that thought just one step further. On those okay. airplanes that they're chasing, has there been anything in your local papers or any of the papers at all that talk about what the airplanes have witnessed? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, that's Absolutely a surprise. Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I used to work for. I was the the local uh, radio news anchor, uh, one of the local news anchors here for our local radio station, and even they won't cover these. Do you do you know the reason why? I mean, has there been any conversation or any any nothing, in, nothing, no replies whatsoever. Interesting. And these are people I worked with. <laughs> well, that's really interesting. <laughs> okay. So, well, all right. So you, uh, the word that I'm hearing in my head is that some of these objects are are really what you would call they're morphing. In a yes. sense, they 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 they're individual. They come together. They morph into something entirely different. What do you make out of it, really, honestly? What do you personally make out of it? Um, <laughs> awe is all I can say. It's awesome to see some of these objects, and they're actually changing shape right in front of you. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they're doing over Sonora. I wish I knew. Do That's you... why I started this investigation. Okay, and I like that word, investigation. What have you discovered through some of your investigation, if anything? The only thing I can uh, say that I've so far discovered is uh, that these objects, the sightings seem to be increasing. They're not just over Sonora. They're all over the world. Um, some of the objects that I videotaped have been seen uh, not just in Sonora, uh, but I had one object, or actually two objects that I videotaped at one time that were um, flying slowly. One of them was brighter than the other, and uh, someone else in another area of California saw the same objects that I was videotaping. So um, these objects, they're becoming more confused, and I have no idea what they're doing here except that there is an anticipatory feeling that something is about to happen, and I've been feeling that for a year now. It's just that that overall impression when you wake up that when is the other shoe going to drop kind of thing. Exactly. When when is this going to be revealed kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be, um, I don't know exactly when. <laughs> I wish I did know, but it seems that something is going to happen. And they're here for a reason. 
and the investigation continues. We haven't come to any conclusions yet. Well, let's talk about the investigation a little bit more. So okay. as you're investigating, what, what other than, than taking the film clips and the, and the video clips and the pictures and the stills and obviously having witnesses, what other areas are you delving into to try to find the answers to? Well, there is a mystery surrounding um, a, a mountain here in Sonora. It's called Lion's Ball Mountain. Uh, there is a road called uh, Lion's Ball Mountain Road, which on maps, current maps, shows a road that continues from Sonora to another town um, called Twain Heart. Yet when we've tried to follow that road from Sonora towards uh, Twain Heart, there is where it just, the road stops. Even though it shows a continuous road, the road stops. There's a huge fence. It says no hunting. There's buildings there where it shows a complete road. There's a building right in your way. On the other side, coming from Twain Heart towards Sonora, there is what they call a berm or a huge uh, dirt pile that won't allow you to go over the road. The road turns into a dirt road, and then all of a sudden you can't go any farther. These Both of these areas that are blocked off are several miles apart, and we can't get to those parts that are, are missing. That's very interesting. I want you to hold that thought, Dr. Olson, because when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the missing part of the road. So stay tuned, and we'll be back with more of Journeys with Rebecca in just a moment. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here as spoken to, or speaking with, rather, Dr. Mark Olson. We're talking about um, the Sonora sightings. And, you know, Dr. Olson, you left off with the road that is not the road. There's this piece of uh, what do you say, a few miles that's kind of missing or impassable? Mm-hmm. What's the building that's stopping? I mean, do you know what, what's in that building? I, I feel like that there's something that the, maybe that building was put there for a reason. <laughs> I have no idea. There's just signs posted that say no hunting, no trespassing. Um, there, it's a big building, and um, hills. But there's a huge hill with trees where the road is supposed to be. And so nobody can actually get onto this property of this missing piece of the road? No. Okay. That's that's really interesting. Well, let's while we're talking about all of this, why don't you go ahead and give your web address so that people that are listening can go ahead and, and check it out while we're talking about it and some of the stills and the pictures that you have. Okay. Uh, the website is www.sonorasightings.com. It's S-O-N-O-R-A-S-I-G-H-T-I-N-G-S.com. Okay. And they can find uh, all the information. There's video clips and um, information on the documentaries that we are producing so that people can see the full footage and not just the video clips that are on the website. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your website. What is it there that you'd like to draw attention to for people that would that are, are really – I see my, for myself, you know, I, I spoke about the, the Phoenix Lights. You know, there's, there's um, some other stuff going up on the uh, northern coast of – you know, up by Oregon and Washington. You know, I've had a few of those guests on too, as well as up in people that have been up in uh, Canada as well that have mm-hmm. talked about these sightings. And what you're saying is very similar to what everybody else is saying: is here's all this activity, um, and they always seem to be around an area where um, the, the the majority of these are where people can't actually access physically access where you would think that they might, you know, come in and out or whatever the case may be. I think it's quite interesting, and this is happening, as you said, worldwide. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've gotten some reports from uh, some people over in uh, England and uh, the, you know, uh, British area over there and all of that, and as well as some people in uh, Australia that have also shared this information as well. So this is this is a phenomenon that's worldwide. I think we probably need to, I don't know if expose is a quite quite the right word for it, but I think we need to make this information um, so that people understand the, the enormity of this activity. And yeah. so on your website, getting back to that, sorry about that, I got off on a tangent, but on your website, what is it that you would like to draw attention to for people for, for their own research, for their own information? Well, um, what I'd like the people to draw their attention to are the sightings are happening all over the world. I have videotapes of the daytime cylinder, the daytime triangle, and all sorts of things that they can look at on my website. But the most important thing is uh, they can go outside and see these things for themselves. All they have to do is turn off their TVs, their VCRs, their DVD players, go outside, watch the sunset, watch the stars come out, and I can almost guarantee you're going to see something that's going to change your life. What's it done for you? How has it Um, changed your life, Dr. Olson? What were you doing before? You know, How different was your life before all these sightings as opposed to how it is now? 
Well, when it, before I was working a regular job, I'm an interpreter for the deaf. I'm also an office manager and a document control specialist. And I was just going about my daily life like everybody else. And uh, I started looking up. And as soon as I looked up and I saw the very first object, it changed my life. I went out and bought a camcorder and started watching the sky no matter where I went, no matter what time of day or night. I was always looking at the sky. And I would see things that just were not ordinary. And ever since then, I haven't stopped. It has totally changed my life. I want to know what these things are. I may never know what they are, but at least I can try to find the answers. And there are other people that share your, I guess, passion, for the lack of a better word, um, that have also become kind of involved with looking up. And I, um, you, you have uh, people around you that are also doing the same thing, that are assisting you in this. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I have uh, friends and neighbors and family members that are helping me out. I also have, uh, uh, we're starting a network together of other people in other places. Uh, Jeff Willis in uh, Phoenix. We have Patrick Eskert in L.A., David Sarita. And uh, we also have uh, a group called the, the UFO Research Alliance that we have started called Euphora, which is a group of uh, uh, people that are interested in finding out what these are and investigating these sightings all over the world. So are you getting reports on a daily basis or, or how you guys meet all the time or how you, how you, because how, what I'm interested in is, is for the audience out there is that there's, that we have some true UFO buffs that, that, that listen to the show mm-hmm. and they may have some information and I'd like to know how maybe they can get involved with assisting you or, or sharing, you know, it's that whole sharing thing. That's the premise of this whole show is sharing information. So how yeah. do we, how do we connect you with them or how do they connect with you? Well, they can go to my website, and there is a link on the main page to Euphora for anybody who wants to join. Um, we want people who are very serious investigators, uh, people that can um, videotape and document, uh, send their videos to us. Uh, there are several uh, groups within this group. Uh, there's Brian Vike from HBCC UFO in Canada. We have uh, BJ from UFOcasebook.com. So any of those places they can go to and sign up. But they can find an uh, a easy link right on to, on my website. And you know, speaking of Brian Bike, he he is probably one of my favorite people as well. He's he's truly uh, an investigator as well. So um, I recommend anybody that's trying to get a hold of and, and trying to get a part of this that would like to be a part of it. It's as easy as clicking on some websites and doing some emails. That easy, that simple. Because I think it's time for us to come together as a unit and you know let's make everyone aware that this is a phenomena truly. And you know we're just about out of time on this segment. So when we come back, Dr. Olson, we're going to talk a little bit more about the document documentaries and more connections. So stay tuned and we'll see you right back. <laughs> Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with Dr. Mark Olson, Sonora Sightings. Uh, that's the name of the website, too, or the address of the website, www.sonorasightings.com. You can also get that link from my website, which is journeyswithrebecca.com. Go directly there. I urge, I, I urge anyone who is interested in this particular phenomena to check out all the different resources at, um, particularly my homepage, um, with all the past guests. There are so many people, if you have footage, if you have information, if you'd like to share anything, there's ways that you can become a part of this and to help discover uh, what is really going on out there. Um, we know that there's been tons and tons of activity out there. We do know that. Um, it's in the news, although it's subdued. It's still in the news. People are still coming out. They're still getting that information out there. Dr. Mark Olson is one of them. As a matter of fact, his works have um, the, the footage and the stills and all of that that he has done has actually ended up in not one, not two, but three different documentaries that I'm going to turn this over to you now, Dr. Olson, and maybe you can explain the process or the progress, if you will, um, both of those with these three documentaries on this very just phenomenal phenomena. <laughs> okay. Well, it started out uh, last year um, when I first started uh, videotaping these objects. I was uh, contacted by David Sarita, a well-known ufologist down in Southern California, who wanted to use some of my footage in his new documentary that came out last year called uh, Visitors, California UFO Wave. And uh, that DVD 
is uh, it talks about the the whole UFO phenomena over California in both L.A. and Sonora. And uh, after that, my footage was also used in the second documentary, which is called Dan Aykroyd, Unplugged on UFOs, where he describes his passion and uh, his wish for knowing what these objects are. He's a passionate ufologist himself. And David Sarita interviewed him exclusively for that uh, documentary. And uh, that one uh, right now is actually being negotiated with a major film company for production. Um, and uh, the third so one we, is one let that me, is Let me interrupt on. you. So we don't have any time frame as to when this one can be seen yet. Well, it's already out on DVD, but it has been sold out. Okay. And uh, but and, the, and until negotiations, it won't be available again. Right. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. The first edition is already sold out. Okay. Um, the Visitors California UFO Wave, uh, the first documentary, is still available, and you can get a copy off of my website. And um, the third one is a work in progress. The first two only uh, use the footage from May and June of last year, and we've had so many different sightings that we decided we're going to put out um, a series of documentaries about the Sonora sightings themselves, uh, Volume 1, Volume 2, that kind of thing. And we are working on that as we speak. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So we can still get the first one. The second one, we have to wait for that information before right. we know where we can get it from. Is that correct? And, you know, correct. And I do urge anybody who wants to see the full footage um, to get the California UFO wave before it's sold out. Um, this is an amazing documentary that David Sarita put together, and it, it, it does have a full footage of these objects, including the daytime cylinder, the daytime discs that I videotaped that were directly over my head, and the daytime triangle, which is the very first that has ever been recorded on video. Is there any pictures in there, uh, any video showing the, and I'm getting back to our first conversation here about where they were actually flying behind the airplane? Yes, Good. the very first video that I ever took was of a jet. I was just practicing with a camcorder to see how I could use it. And uh, as I followed this jet, which was making a contrail, this object dropped right down, a white ball-like object or sphere, dropped down from above the jet, went behind the contrail, did some crazy maneuvers where it looked like it stopped on a dime a couple of times, and then shot straight back up again in front of the contrail. And that uh, full footage is included on the video. You can also see video clips of it on my website. Oh, excellent, excellent. So for anyone out there who is interested in pursuing and becoming more involved with this whole wonderful, and I do believe it's a wonderful phenomena, is I urge you to go to sonorasightings.com. Uh, click on all the links in there. There's, there's tons of pictures. There's tons of footage. Get that DVD, that first one. Uh, look for it yourself. I mean, any of you out there that are skeptical as well, I urge you to investigate it for yourself because this is a worldwide phenomena, and I, I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that if everyone gets together who is interested in this, becomes involved with this, at some point we will have our answers. We will know. And we will be the ones that will be better prepared for it than those who either don't believe in it or, or are so busy in their lives that they just they just continue on and, and don't see the world around them that it's a greater thing than themselves right here on this earth plane. So I urge everyone to do that. Um, now, Dr. Olson, um, when the third documentary comes out, first of all, I'd, I'd love for you to um, give me an update on that. Let me know so that I can uh, have you back on. We can announce that. Um, if you know when the second documentary that, you know, is now in maybe maybe going to be into process of, you know, um, a regular film, if you will let us know about that as well so that people can, can be up to date as possible, we'll post it on the website. Um, and any time that you have any updates, we'd love to have you give that information, and we will post it on journeyswithrebecca.com. And I would appreciate that greatly. Thank you, Rebecca. Oh, you are so welcome. And before we go, is there mm -hmm. anything else that you would wish to, if you were to say anything to anybody, out there, what is your wish that you would wish for people to hear? I wish that a lot of uh, more people would take time out of their busy lives and look up. You're going to find out that the world is uh, bigger than you ever expected. Once you look up, you'll see things that you you will not believe yet. You'll have to believe because they're right there in front of you. And and there's proof positive of that. Dr. Yes. Olson, thank you so much. This has been such fun and such joy. And thank you for all the information. Blessings to you. And blessings to you too, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome.
I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discoveries. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night. <laughs>